So I found this old safe at a yard sale. And here's something you probably don't know about me. I'm an excellent safe cracker. So I'm gonna just let my fingers do the walk in here. And we're gonna find out what's in this thing. Could be anything. Yep, that's one. Oop. I think that's the third number. Yep, there's two. Yeah. Yeah, that feels like the third one. <laughs> that was dumb. That, that was dumb. Every tool's a hammer. Unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a chisel. <laughs> Look at that torch. Hate that nut. I'm not, we're not doing that. Because huh. it ain't built till it's overbuilt. news there's, there's nothing in there and I already knew that this safe doesn't even lock um, I'm just a really good actor you know and also I wasn't lying when I said I was a safe cracker uh, that just means a white guy that's not dangerous so yeah that's me uh, what this is actually is uh, a safe that my cousin gave me this used to be my grandfather's safe that he used in his farm machinery business. That sun is really, really illuminating. Uh, and, and it never locked as far as I ever remember. And it, it probably never did. Um, I don't know. I mean, it did it sometime, obviously. But uh, <clears throat> as far as I can remember, the thing never locked. It was just kind of a firebox, you know. In fact, I think I can remember all he kept in there was his invoices that he was getting ready to send out at month end, you know? So it was just a firebox. But I've decided, since, since they gave it to me, I'm gonna restore it. Sure, I mean, I know tons about safes. I don't know anything about safes, uh, but it doesn't seem like it can be too hard. And I actually found a, because because it has no lock, in the, there's no guts in the lock anymore. Um, but I actually found a place online and I, and I got in touch with the guy. They were willing to talk to somebody who doesn't know anything about lockery or whatever this is. And uh, he talked me through it with lots of pictures and measurements and questions. And he got me the closest thing, uh, the closest thing that we could get to a replacement lock. And of course, it's gonna require a whole bunch of machining and you know, stuff, but that we can handle. Um, basically, this is the new lock and it replaces this whole, this this whole iron box here is, is the lock part of it. You know, it used to be, it's all, all the guts are gone. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it apart because that shouldn't be too hard. I mean, it's not like it's made to be hard to take apart or anything. And then we're gonna clean it up. I'm gonna give it a coat of paint. It's like, kind of like my gas pump. Is it a restoration? Ah, in my book it is, and some people's know, and I get it. But uh, we're gonna clean it up. We're gonna give it a coat of paint. Maybe try to fancy it up a little. Old safes, uh, not this one, but a lot of old safes were very fancy. They had really fancy, you know, writing on the front of them and stuff. So we might try to do something to make it a little bit fancier, but at the very least, I'll get it so it locks and hopefully also unlocks and we'll have a nice safe. I just had a will done, which I recommend. You should do it before you're as old as me, by the way. Uh, and I need a place to keep my will. So this will be perfect. I mean, I don't have any money to put in it. And really... For that reason, and kind of dumb to bother having a will, I guess. Yeah, see, now I'm questioning the whole thing.
it's fine. We're going to do it anyway. So stay tuned. Uh, we're about to learn how to fix a safe. It's broken. How hard can it be? I will tell you this. The place where I bought the uh, safe parts from is called MBA USA. And uh, like I said, they were incredibly helpful. They really, uh, they, you know, most of these places, they want to deal with locksmiths who call up and say, I need a lock for a 102467G. And then they just send it to you and that's it. But when you call up and you say the dumb stuff I had to say to get this figured out, a lot of them, they don't want to talk to you. But these guys were terrific. They were very helpful. They got me, I think, they got me what I needed. If not, it isn't their fault. Let's put it that way. So we're going to dig in here. I think the first thing I'll do is clean it up. I'll take a wire wheel to it, kind of clean up, the, try to smooth it up a little, and, and uh, get a coat of primer on it. And then I'll dig into the actual lock work. Uh, and then once that's done, I think, or nearly done, we'll go ahead and do the paint part of it. I don't want to put all that time in if it ends up being, you know, garbage. So, uh, but also my milling machine is still somewhat broken. Uh, so I can't really do the, the work to adapt it over yet. So we'll start with a little bulwark, a little fun with the, uh, the old wire wheel. It's tomorrow. That was about enough lead paint for one night, I guess. This paint is amazing. The wire wheel does not take it off. Whatever this is, I want it on my next truck. Uh, it's really good stuff. And I'm sure super healthy. Pretty gross. I got out of here, came back this morning once the dust settled. Anyways, I think I'm uh, all ready to prime. Shop's warm. I'm just gonna brush some primer on this thing so that it can be drying while I work on a couple other projects. Uh, and I think we'll wrap this video up after that. Trying to keep these videos a little shorter so they're easier to watch. Um, of course, a project like this will take a few videos uh, and I'll probably throw them on a playlist so you can follow them through if it's, if it's a, something you're interested in. I think that makes it easier for you that way. So I think as soon as I'm done priming this, we'll, we'll call that a video. We'll stop it right there and pick it up where we left off on the next one. You can see I, I got a coat primer on, obviously, and uh, I mean not everywhere, not like inside or underneath or places you don't see because I don't care about them. That's why it's not a real restoration. It's just a, we'll call it a sprucing up. We're just, it's like, we're just putting a little lipstick on the pig at this point. That's all. It, you can see I used a brush. That's because of a very technical reason that that only the most high-tech painter type people know about, and that is that primer in a can is a lot cheaper than primer in a rattle can. So that's what I do, plus I already had it. 
I do hate that, that it gives you brush strokes and I'm not that good at it. So I, I kind of go over it when it's almost dry and that seems to make them a little bit less, but not really. But also on a, on a project like this, this safe is, is really, well, it's somewhat beat up, but really it was never pretty. You know, there's, there's all these, oh yeah, that shows pretty good. There's all these things which are, I guess is just, was in the steel when they made it, you know, it was just kind of nasty. Uh, but that's the way it is. And I don't, like I said, I'm not the guy that feels the need to clean all that and, and bondo it and make it all go away and make it perfect. That's, that just ain't me. Um, I think it's very cool, the guys that do that stuff, but you're going to have to watch a different channel if that's what you want to see, because I don't do it. Um, we got her clean. We got her primed. Now, next thing I'll do is I'll move on to mechanically fixing this door, getting the lock, the new lock in it and all that stuff. Like I said, these guys uh, from MBA USA out of Kentucky, they had you know, all these safe type parts. And actually, I think they have any kind of locksmith part. If you have anything that needs to lock and you're having issues with it, you need parts, uh, I would... I would reach out to them, just Google them, MBA USA. Um, they're out of Nicholsonville, Kentucky, and uh, they were super helpful. Uh, and I tried a few other places that I found, and they were not helpful. They don't want... I think the locksmith industry is, you know, they're security professionals. And they, they don't want to teach somebody how the inner workings of a safe work because I might be a bad guy who wants to do bad things to somebody. So I get it. Uh, but it is nice when people will help you, you know, and these, these guys here were super helpful. So, so the next step in the process is, you know, once this is dry, I get her flipped over. I got to remove all the old stuff. And then basically I just have to compare the new lock to the old one dimensionally. And if and I, and I need to, basically, I got to make the bolt end up at the same spot the old one did. And if, and if I need to bolt on pieces of metal or cut off pieces of metal or whatever, uh, then that's what I do. I don't know. It should be, should be pretty basic, I think, it seems like. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. The next video, you and me together are going to learn a lot more about how a safe lock works. All right, that's, uh, that's going to do it for this one. Yeah, I watched the videos, I realized. How much crap I have laying around in the background is just a, I have a lot, a lot of stuff. I'm not saying I'm getting rid of it because I'm, I'm not, don't be spreading that rumor because if my wife hears it, there'll be a dumpster parked out here. Serious. We're going to wrap this one up for now. The safe is cleaned, got a coat of primer on it, I'm going to let it get good and dry before I mess with it because that's a bad habit I have. Yeah, you know, you get it almost dry and then you start doing things and then you mess it all up. You got to do it over again. Let's not do that. Okay, let's just do this. We're going to let it sit. I got plenty of other projects. I think it's going to be a beautiful day. We had a lot of rain overnight, but the birds are singing. Spring is springing. It's uh, going to be, I think, a really nice afternoon. So maybe I can get outside and do some stuff. And I would encourage you to do the same. Turn off the YouTube. If it's nice outside your house, get out there for an hour or two, you know? Get the stink blown off you, you know? It's been a long winter. If you're watching this in August, it's been a long summer. So still, get out and get some fresh air. I want to thank you for spending your time with me. I really do appreciate you. Like I said, I'm trying to keep the video shorter. I think maybe that's a good thing, but please put the comments down below. Tell me if you like this better, shorter videos is better. If you'd rather see me like take a project like this and cram it all into one video and, and try, to, try to keep it shorter. I kind of get a little wordy, a little talky talky. So that's a problem. I don't know if that's good, but hey, put it down there. That's fine. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear what you think. Really the only reason I'm doing this is you I can get more done if I don't have to so tell me what you want to see and I will try to do that be better at that 
but I got lots of other projects. You're probably going to see this one in the background of some other videos and stuff because, you know, the studio <laughs> doesn't have a lot of space for storing things out of the way. So I just leave them. So bear with me. Make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you click the th thumbs up. Be careful. Don't click the thumbs down by accident. If you got to put your readers on, do it. Okay, because there's a difference. I want these. Send me comments. Whatever you can do. YouTube likes all that stuff. So that's very helpful for me. There goes my wife. Bye, honey. She's leaving. <laughs> Hope she comes back. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your time. Make sure you tell your friends. Text them right now. They really should be watching The Town Tinker. The guy's all over the place. You never know what he's going to do a video on next. And most of them are not that good. That Leave that part out. That's, that'd be good. But tell them. It's The Town Tinker. Similar to The Village Idiot, but safer. I'll see you next time. Until then, may God continue to bless you and the United States of America.